everybody. I decided to take you out into my local little forest here and just show you a couple of examples of what we're going to be talking about this week. So first up, you can see here, there's a terrific contrast. We have a monocot, which is a native ginger, which is actually starting to die back. And so you remember that one particular lesson that we did, the contrast between between your monocots and your dicots, your monocot stems die back. They do not have secondary growth. So this is a really lovely example of that. And also our totally parallel venation, nice and straight, you know, really terrific. Whereas this little native, um, Australian native tree is the total opposite. You've got lots of woody growth, so it's definitely not herbaceous. You've got leaves that have that reticulate venation and um, you can see that it actually has, is going to have buds and so on. So that, those two are quite a good contrast. This one here, I want you to think about what that could actually be. You probably got, you guys are so switched on, you're gonna guess what that actually is. But it's great because it's got a fruiting body as well. So you can see that it's actually come into fruit in the back here, which we're not going to talk about until we get to that lesson because that makes it all complicated. But let's just go through this way and have a look at what else we've got. We've got a lovely little young cycad coming here. So you'll remember when we did the cycads, they actually belong to our gymnosperm, so not to our flowering plants. So they're definitely not in our anthophytes. Then just over here, this is a terrific, terrific example of that Smilax glycophylla. So Smilax glycophylla is the native sarsaparilla, which is actually a monocot botanically, but it's adapted to have the um, reticulate venation that the dicots have. So a great example of that. We're going to talk about prickles and things which are on this particular plant which I'm not sure which species it is when we get to that. Also this, this is a great example of a dicot that has a whirled leaf arrangement. So you've got a number of leaves at one nodal point. So when we talk about stems we're going to talk about nodes and internodes. We're going to start on that in the next lesson or so. So let's move over this way, across the little bridge. There's something I want to show you, and it's a great example of root modifications. So we've definitely got, before we get to that, just come over this way. We've got a palm here. So a palm is obviously a monocot. Everybody knows that by now. If you go back and revise your notes on your palms, that's what this, it fits into our monocots. This one down here, if we just move the camera down this way, this is a Schefflera, which most of you, if you've grown up in Queensland or in Australia, you'd know as an umbrella tree. And the interesting thing here, and when we get to do leaves, you'll see it. All of this structure here is one whole leaf. They're actually not one, two, three, four, five, six leaves together. That's actually all one whole leaf. Okay, so let's just move over to the highlight, and that's this ficus. So this is a terrific example of a root modification. These roots are actually coming down off the stem, which makes it an aberration to the norm. Normally your roots obviously are under the ground, but in this particular case, they are an adjunct. So they are a secondary, or if you like, adventitious root structure that gives additional support to the tree. So the main thing to understand, and we're going to talk about that in our lesson tonight, roots have to go down. They are definitely not going to go anywhere else, and you can see that. 
they're most definitely going down in this tree. They also don't contain chlorophyll, so that's another way to help recognize that it is actually a root structure. If we look over here, we've got these really, really unusual, what would be called maybe a thickened tendril. I haven't actually worked out exactly where they fit, but you can see that they're going up, not down. I haven't actually scraped to see if they've contained chlorophyll, anything like that. Um, they could be, I would say they're a stem modification, not a root modification because of the fact that they're going up and they're not actually physically going down. So if we look at over here, most of this understory is definitely monocot. So this is your one of your native grasses. This is actually lamandra grass. So it's pretty common for these to be in these native bush settings because they're really actually not much else will grow in here it's pretty dry so even though we've got this lovely little creek growing through so we'll discuss this further tonight and hopefully someone's got some good questions and i'll see you then okay